Hey guys, what's going on? Michael White here, your favorite self-taught developer, and in today's video, we're gonna be discussing the harsh reality of being a self-taught developer. Now, when you first start teaching yourself how to code, the honeymoon phase is the best part. Everything's still simple enough to where it's quick to grasp, and the reason why you started is still fresh in your head, right? And it's so easy to see the result. It's so easy to see where you want to be. But unfortunately, that honeymoon phase doesn't last forever. And at some point, we all find ourselves hitting that wall, questioning where to go next. Now, that brings us to our first point. When you're teaching yourself how to code, it can be very hard to figure out where to start and where to go next. When you want to learn your first programming language, there is an ocean of information out there. There's tons of it. And it's on you to sift through all this information and figure out which language works for you the best and will help you accomplish your goal, whatever that may be. And then once you figure out the language you wanna learn, it's on you to plot out a course for learning the language. No one's gonna hold your hand and make sure you're on the right path. No one's gonna say, hey, you know, do X, Y, and Z and you'll be able to get a job here. No, you gotta figure out what you need to learn to get to the next step. Now, luckily, there are sources of information out there that can kind of guide you and get you going in the right direction. If you're interested in web development, I know the Odin Project's great. I have a video on that if you guys wanna check it out. Uh, the link should be up here or here, up there somewhere. And I'll also post a link below in the comments. Free Code Camp is another awesome source if you need a little bit of structure in your self-teaching. But all in all, it's it's on you. You have to make sure that what you're learning is getting you to your end goal. And eventually, you're gonna get stuck. You're gonna get stuck on something. And this is where grit comes in. Grit is essential to being a self-taught developer. Absolutely. When you're on your own, all you have is Google. There is no phone a friend. There is no asking the teacher for an answer. All you have is you and Google. And you guys can reach out to me. You can DM me on Twitter. I'll have a Discord up soon. So if you need to ask me a question and I can help you, I will help you. But you guys know I'm, I'm learning myself. But if I can help, I will. But the onus is on you to solve the problem. You gotta be able to state your problem in a good enough way on Google to where the results will help you. Or maybe you can find a solution on Stack Overflow. Or maybe you can even post the question on Stack Overflow and ask for help there. But that's on you. And if you guys are like myself and you're looking to actually transition into a career in web development, well, it is extremely and fiercely competitive. But just take a look at Dev Twitter if you don't believe me. Look at all the people starting their 100 days of code challenges, all the people talking about how often they get rejected from job offers, um, all the roadmaps like telling people what they need to learn in order to get a job, all the boot camps popping up across the country. This is all your competition. All of these people are vying for the same jobs you're after. And when you're self-taught, it's up to you to find your way around all these people doing the exact same thing. And it's on you to stand out. Luckily, like I said, the majority are all doing the same thing. So with a little planning, you can bypass everybody jamming themselves up in the front door and go in through a window. But that's on you. Again, as a self-taught dev, you have to be creative enough to actually think about how you're going to do that. And eventually, you're gonna to have to deal with imposter syndrome. Now, imposter syndrome affects everybody differently. For me, it's never feeling ready. Like, I'm always asking myself, when can you officially say you're a developer? What is the bar? Is it when you get your first job? Is it when you build your first project? Like, I'm currently in the process of starting my own job hunt, and uh, I'm constantly battling with the feeling that I'm not ready yet. But, luckily for me, I've come up with a pretty good plan for the job hunt process, and I have a video kind of going over that. I'm in phase one of my own plan now. You guys can check that out up there, whichever corner it's in. Or I'll have it posted in a link below. But imposter syndrome, it's a different kind of beast, man. And it's going to hit you at some point. You just got to have it in you to know that you might not be ready and then take the risk and take the chance anyways. Like you might not be ready for that job, but you should still apply to it. You might not be ready for whatever it is you're gonna take on, but you gotta have, again, the grit to decide that you're gonna take it on and to move forward, man. The unseen threat is the deadliest. You could be developing terrible habits and wouldn't even know. Without having someone to review your code, ultimately you're kind of just winging it. There's times when I wish I had someone who could look over my code and you know just, just give me that nudge, that confirmation that I'm doing things the right way and I'm going in the right direction. 
But I don't have anyone like that in my life right now. So maybe it's time I start reaching out to some people. Hopefully I can get in contact with somebody, which leads me to my next point is finding a mentor is tough, man. I know one of the things that I need to do better is to get out there and network. Believe it or not, I'm an introverted person. <laughs> I'm not I'm not all about putting myself out there, right? That's something I have to get over myself. Like I really do think I would benefit incredibly so from having a mentor, but it's just so hard to find somebody who's willing to, you know, take the time and and, and help you out. But uh, I'm gonna look for one. I'll let you guys know if I find one, the process of me finding one, that's something I am looking for right now. Can't wait to get one. But at the end of the day, whether or not you succeed as a self-taught developer is ultimately up to you. Make sure the time that you're dedicating right now to learning the craft isn't wasted. When you're setting time aside to learn, don't just focus on getting better at coding. Focus on building good habits around studying, focus, and lifestyle. And most importantly, have a goal beyond the code. All right, coding's just a tool. Ultimately, at the end of the day, coding is just a tool, you know? It's no different than a hammer, a drill, what have you. It's on you to use the tool to get to where you want to be and use it to build towards that goal. All right, so that's gonna do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed the video, you guys know what to do down there. All right, for the other self-taught homies out there, what are some of the harsh realities you guys had to accept? Do let me know down in the comments below. And uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up there. For those of you curious about how my job hunt is going, I'm gonna have another video posted probably next week about that. I got stuck updating my portfolio and my resume, trying to make sure I had all my, what do they say, ducks in a row. <laughs> all right, so that's gonna be coming out soon. Um, yeah, Discord should be out pretty soon too. I mentioned it earlier. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. You guys get it? One piece? <laughs> Super cool. Bye. Bye. Bye.